Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isaiah, Isaiah gives the people a word. He says, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the de desert, rivers in the desert. Our, our passage from Isaiah 43, beginning at the 18th verse, comes to us as Isaiah is preparing the people for freedom. This freedom sounds and feels like release. And I imagine that the people have a lot of ideas about what freedom will look like in the future. I imagine that some had received from the past a sense that it would be good to get back to Israel where they could put the Babylonian experiences behind them and return to things as normal. Still others might have reflected and learned a thing or two in Babylon and were eager to return and to share what they had learned, uh, new practices perhaps, uh, to update community life or government or even worship. For They had learned a lot about worshiping away from the temple. There were still others who imagined that going back would be difficult uh, and uh, bring with it its own trials, its own tribulations. So they were reticent. And back home, we know that there are people in Israel uh, still, uh, not everyone left, uh, and their lives have progressed while they've been apart, and they've evolved in life and government and traditions. They don't even know about this prophecy, and yet their lives will be changed too. Finally, they have been in Babylon for 70 years, this means that there are multiple generations in Babylon who don't even know Israel, don't remember Israel, and all they have is stories about Israel. Uh, each of these groups can perceive, in the words of God given by Isaiah, a new season, and that it is upon them a new time period. But there are many ideas and many unknowns. They know that they must leave behind them Babylon and what that was like. They will not be able to take with them everything they have. Change is before them. They know this. God, through Isaiah, gives them, though, a bit of advice. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. This is hard work really hard to convince people to let go or to stop looking backwards. Augustine of Hippo reminds us though, that there's no past. There's also no future. There's only the present. The present. The present past and the present future, yes, but only the present. And this helps us to understand that the past does not exist except in memory and is changed in a very real way as we live out the present. Past is dangerous territory. Nostalgia too quickly clouds the lens. There was once an article on NPR about what makes people happy. They had a researcher there and uh, he had studied what makes people happy and uh, they asked him to share what he had learned. He said, uh, he said that what makes people happy is hope Hope, he said, is framed by a realistic view of the past, not a nostalgic one. Furthermore, one of the things that we do when we spend our time looking at the past is that we aren't looking where we are or where we're going. God invites the people to hear. They need to think about and dwell upon what is before them to see where they are, to see the season that they're in, to see where they're going, beginning to imagine together what that will be like. And then Isaiah gives the people a word that proclaims a new thing springs 
forth. What is ahead of them is new. It is, it is new because they are new. They have been remade in Babylon, as the rest of Isaiah tells us. They have sung songs of sorrow by the waters, and now they sing songs of joy. And the prophet has given them words of comfort, comfort, comfort. They are new because they have children and grandchildren with them. They are new because they have lost people who have died along the way. They're new because of life and experiences that they've had. They are to be a new people because they will be joined by others as they journey home. Their return will be shaped by new people, people who are there at home, who may even be living in their houses, relatives left behind. They will make new friends along the way. Uh, they will be a new people because they are changed. They're changed as they are joined by new neighbors, friends, and new kin. What seems important to say here is that God is, is not new. Uh, God's work is not new. God's way of working is not new. For example, they knew that they would be freed from Babylon because God frees people who are bound and enslaved. The newness is about the way in which they are to be changed, the way they can now live in a new way. The new thing is truly their transformation. The new thing is individual and corporate change. People will always, I think, want to stay behind. Fear of the future, fear of the journey, fear of change and transformation, fear of what may be lost, fear of the unknown. These will all be powerful stumbling blocks along the way to the new thing that God is doing. God intends, though, through a prophet's words, to shore up the leaders, to inspire those who follow, to give courage to the weak and inspiration to the unimaginative. God says, God is making, I am making a way in the wilderness that is God's nature after all. We should not be surprised at this. It's good news nevertheless to be reminded of God's work. That God's work will be framed by the old ways of who God is. And God has always led. God led Adam and Eve out of the garden, giving them what was needed for their life. Led Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Jacob and Esther and Noah into the wilderness for testing Job, God is present. God makes a way in the wilderness because it is God's work of making a way, providing rivers in the desert. Food in the wilderness, water in the desert, those are old chapters in God's narrative. We know that's what God does and who God is. And today, I think this prophecy comes to you. You stand on a precipice as your faith forebears have done many times before. A precipice of an old mission age looking into the future, a new thing on the horizon. A precipice of a time of quarantine and viral outbreak, economic uh, looking uh, in, into a changed world. Uh, where difference and racism and xenophobia and gaps in wealth are ever more visible, a new thing must come, mustn't it? A precipice between uh, 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 Zoom and old forms of worship uh, and new mediums, art and creativity and music and the word delivered to God's people wherever they are now in new ways through new platforms. You have been changed by all of this. Others too. Each with different experiences and different ideas about the future. Different visions and imaginings about who you are becoming. Even now as you are becoming a new community. I invite you to hear God's voice in the world around you. Hear it from the prophets of old and new. Hear it again and for the first time. Yes, the wilderness is before you, but God is there too with you, ahead of you and behind you, a pillar of cloud by day, 
fire by night. The valleys will come up to meet you and the hills will be made low before your shepherd's feet. Food for the journey is provided, water from the rock that lives, uh, so th that lives, that lives so that you will not thirst ever. Hear the prophet's words and know the seasons as you perceive it. A new thing is happening to you and yours and your people and the people of your community. They are in need of a new mission, a new word, a new hand, a vision for a volatile world. Understanding for the story of the oppressed who live in it, sick and the dying. Clarity about our path together and how we must travel light with a willingness to, to leave some of the former things behind. God is doing a new thing in you. God is doing a new thing in, in us. And so we are invited to do a new thing together in this new time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.